Well, the calling of Matthew, as uh, Wendy read to us, must have been a pretty significant event because it appears in all three of the, what is called the Synoptic Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And for them to record that, uh, it must have been something that Matthew talked about incessantly. Did I ever tell you at the time that I met Jesus and he, he came to my house for dinner? When did you last say that? Have I told you about the time that Jesus... We don't do it very often, do we? But Matthew must have been so excited. It had made such a difference to his life that he couldn't stop talking about it. And uh, Mark, who wasn't one of the 12 apostles, nor was Luke, heard about it almost exactly the same as Matthew himself records it in his Gospel. So why is this of such, significant, such significance and what can it do to uh, guide us? Well, here's Matthew, we sat in his office. Are there any tax collectors here first? Before I go any further, I, I do not wish to offend. Taxes are fine. But what we find in our day and age is that um, we have bogus tax collectors, don't we? And they come through our phones. Or, as I had a phone call the other day, this is HMRC. No, it's not. And you put the phone down, don't you? But they are trying to get more money out of you. And that's precisely what Matthew would have done. He would have collected, collected the legitimate taxes for the Roman occupying powers and scraped a bit off the top for himself. A bit like that other little fellow, what was his name? Zacchaeus. He was another one in the Bible, wasn't he? A tax collector. And there he is, he sat in his office, collecting taxes. And Jesus sees him. He sees a lot of people, doesn't he? He's walking around, but he sees Matthew. What does he see? He recognises that Matthew has a need, or a sickness, to literally translate it. He's not a happy bunny. He may be rich, but he's not happy. It's funny, some of the richest people I've met have been some of the unhappiest people I've met. I and mean, if you watch some of these programmes of people who win these lottery millions, some of them actually say, I wish I never entered. I wish I'd never seen a penny of the money. Because it's caused me nothing but misery. And Matthew was sick at heart. He wanted a different life. He wasn't satisfied with his life as it was. But he couldn't see a way out. So Jesus issues him a challenge. Do you want a way out? What does he say to him? He says, follow me. That's all he said. Follow me. What does Matthew do? What would you do? What have you done? Those two words, follow me. Not, there's no conditional clause there, is there? Straight forward, follow me. A challenge is issued to Matthew. And Matthew responds. He leaves his office, we're told. Matthew got up and followed him. Quite literally. He gets up in his seat. Whether he locks the safe behind him or stuffs some money in his pockets, we don't know. But he leaves his office and he physically follows Jesus. And then we move on to Matthew's house, where he has this dinner party. What does the Bible tell us about that? Um, and Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. So Jesus obviously knew either where Matthew lived or as they walked away from Matthew's office, they had a conversation. 
And Jesus either said, I'd like to come to your house, or Matthew uh, offered him hospitality, as was custom and normal. Come to my house for something to eat. Showing the respect to Jesus, because that's a respectful thing to do, to offer hospitality. And Jesus saw and heard the criticism of the Pharisees, the good, righteous, religious people. I find now that um, people say to me, particularly if I'm uh, doing a bereavement visit, they'll say, you know, I'm thinking, uh, I'm not really religious. And I say, thank goodness for that, neither am I. And they look, oh. I said, Jesus wasn't religious. In fact, he had some pretty hard things to say about religion. He said, religious people are like whitewashed tombs, all clean and white on the outside, and full of stinking corruption inside. Jesus' words. And that puts people at their age. People don't want religion. They want God. They want a spiritual aspect to their lives. So Jesus saw and heard the criticism of the Pharisees. What was that criticism? Um, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him. And when the Pharisees saw this, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? We can see lots of parallels in there, can't we? And Jesus recognises the sickness of not only those at his dinner party in Matthew's house, but he recognised the inner sickness of those who thought that they were doing what God wanted. The Pharisees. He recognised their sickness. But they didn't get it. We never do anything wrong. We follow the law. We don't need anything else. We keep the Sabbath. We keep all the rules in the Old Testament, the Pentateuch. Why do we need anything more than that? What does Jesus say? On hearing this, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. So he issues them with a challenge. Why do you think you're better than anybody else? Go away and think about it. But they didn't get it. They didn't respond to Jesus' challenge. And so, what about our office? Our house? Our church? Jesus sees us. We forget that. We all forget that. But God knows us better than we know ourselves. And Jesus sees right into our souls. Jesus knows things about us that we've never told anybody else. It's deep down in here. And he sees what makes us sick. He recognises not just our physical ailments, which he wants to heal, but he recognises our spiritual ailments. He recognises our shame, as he did in Matthew. He recognises our guilt, as he did in Matthew. He recognises our longing for a different life, something more fulfilling, something better. And Jesus issues us with the same challenge. If you want those things, if you want healing in body, mind and spirit, follow me. If you want a content life, follow me. If you want to put the past behind you and wipe it clean, follow me. If you want to see God, follow me. That's the challenge. And our 
our challenges, how do we respond? Do we respond like Matthew and get up and follow him? Or do we respond like the Pharisees who say we have no need? We're all right as we are, thank you very much. Where do we go from there? Well, what about following? What does that involve for us? What did it involve for Matthew? It meant movement. It meant getting up physically and doing something. I think there's an advert for running shoes or is it Nike? Just do it. Just do it. It involves movement. It involves action. What did Matthew do? He got up and followed him and invited um, people to uh, Jesus and other undesirables to a dinner party. And if he was like Zacchaeus, and I suspect he was, he started to give his money away again. He did something. And doing something involves physical action. And for us, what might it mean? It might mean um, doing something with our money. Many, many years ago, a man who became a great friend, I conducted his father-in-law's funeral. And he was a very successful general practitioner. And he came to church, and he and his wife said to me afterwards, um, we want to find out more. And I became, I was running what was, I called an inquiries group in the vicarage in those days. And they turned up, and they became firm, committed Christians. And then the doctor came to me one day, after church, and he said, look, there's a collection, I don't know, what, what's that about? He didn't, didn't really know, and he said, well, how much should I give? And uh, I said, well, the Bible teaches a minimum of 10% of our, of our income. He said, fair enough. He started writing a check out, then the wealthy man transformed the church, we were able to do all kinds of things because he responded in action to Jesus' call to follow me. So, giving, but also time. There's things that we can do. There's so many people that need volunteers, they need experience, particularly of us old people. The Citizens Advice Bureau is something that people can get involved with, which is desperate for people with experience and compassion and love to get involved with. Hospital chaplain teams are desperate for people to help, to go around visiting the sick in hospital. Food banks, to volunteer uh, with food banks. There's all kinds of things that we as Christians could and should get involved with. Our talents, we should, listening, all kinds of things we can get involved with. Following Jesus, of course, means sacrifice. None of the disciples, as far as I know, died of natural causes in their own beds. Almost all of them had violent deaths at the hands of other people. Well, I don't know whether God's calling uh, you to martyrdom. I hope he isn't calling me. Uh, but sacrifice, we've sung that, a sacrifice of a thankful heart, of giving to God what he deserves, of following him, the servant king, for us to be the servant of others. Just bow our heads for a moment. Lord God, as Matthew got up out of his tax collector's booth and followed you, so give us the grace, the strength, and the will to do the same, to follow you, to hear what you want us to do, and to do it with gladness and faithfulness. And we pray 
favour, Lord God, that through us we may be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray.